What up guys, this is Jim Fields from Greater China Tech and today I want to talk about Harmony OS. So we've had a lot of people in the comments both on YouTube and Billy Billy who were interested to hear what we thought about Huawei's new operating system. We'll put some of these comments up here for you guys to see. So today we'd like to take a deep dive into this topic and we thought the best thing to do would be to interview somebody who's done a lot of research and exploration to figure out what Harmony OS actually is. So I decided to get in touch with a good friend of mine named John Artman, who's actually one of the head technology editors at the South China Morning Post based in Hong Kong. So we sat down for a long conversation about Harmony OS, what it is, what it isn't, and where it's going in the future. I hope you guys enjoy the conversation. Okay, so welcome, Mr. Artman. Long time to see, how are you, man? Yeah, thanks for, thanks for having me, doing well. So uh, for, for those who don't know, uh, today we have a very special guest on the program, Mr. John. John, if you don't mind uh, letting us know a little bit about uh, where you're working now. Yeah, as you can see, you know, I'm working for uh, the South China Morning Post now as a technology editor. Today we were hoping to uh, understand a little bit about Harmony OS. You know, Huawei first started as a telecommunications company. Uh, that's that's been their core business ever since they were they were founded in the 80s. Under President Trump, they've been cut off from uh, key uh, technologies. Huawei is still trying to figure it out. They're doing a lot of different things. Uh, they have um, a few a few things they're doing in the uh, in the car space, and uh, they're trying to trying to go more into uh, services. And so Harmony is kind of part of that. They really can't build any hardware anymore. Um, you know, their smartphone business is is fading away. Um, instead of focusing on hardware, they're really kind of moving into software. With Harmony, you know, there is kind of a lot of confusion about what it is. Basically, Harmony, what it comes down to is actually two different things. Um, on the one side, it, it was originally built to be an, uh, an IoT operating system, so kind of connecting all devices uh, through internet connectivity and also enabling um, edge computing. But then on the other hand, it's, it's also uh, a smartphone uh, operating system. But only after they realized that they, that they were going to be cut off or could potentially be cut off uh, from Android, uh, which is um, uh, owned uh, by Google, uh, they decided to, to kind of transition uh, or to make a version of Harmony for, uh, for the smartphone. One of the big questions in the Chinese developer community is how much Android does it actually have? Uh, Huawei says that the operating system, both IoT and smartphone, is 100% uh, built in-house, and but they also have admitted to, to, use, to using some uh, parts of, of Android code, uh, but there's still some, some healthy skepticism around um, you know, how much actual code um, is Android from Android is actually in Harmony. On the ground in China, the penetration of Huawei devices is massive. Does this mean you're predicting like the market share and usage of Huawei phones is gonna dramatically decrease? Right, I mean, so we're already seeing shipments drop. Um, you know, Huawei used to be uh, globally in the top five. Uh, in China, they used to be a leader. They're still quite high when it comes to domestic domestic shipments, but globally, you know, in, in some recent reports, Huawei's not even mentioned in the list. They're part of like the kind of, they're, they're grouped with the, the, the others. It's just not possible for them to, uh, to continue to produce uh, the amount of smartphones necessary for them to, uh, to, to, make, to stay competitive in, in that space. Moving on uh, then from this discussion about Huawei into more of a discussion about OSs and mobile OSs. So why is it so hard to make a new mobile operating system and why have so many different manufacturers failed? You know, effectively in the last you know decade, the dominant players have been Android and iOS. The reason it's so difficult is just, I mean, the, the operating system has to, you know, uh, monitor and manage every single thing and make sure that the software and the hardware are communicating properly. And that's, that's very, very difficult to do. Uh, one of the reasons that, um, that Apple, uh, you know, decided to, you know, they're just, they're only going to uh, make custom designed software for their custom designed hardware is because it's actually easier to do that. Uh, the challenge for Android has always been, um, you know, making it making it modular. If you have uh, a Xiaomi phone, uh, or if you have a Samsung phone, um, or some other some other brand that uses that uses Android, what you'll notice, the vanilla version of Android will get updated by Google, and it'll be out for months before the smartphone maker updates their own version. And it's because it takes that long for them to go through the entire operating system and make sure that it doesn't break something on the phone. 
Uh, it makes sure that that users can continue to, to use it. Software is, is hard. Uh, hardware is very hard. Um, integrating the two is, is even harder. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of money, and it's very easy to mess up. And then, you know, on top of that, you, you add competitive marketplace pressures. Uh, BlackBerry, for example, you know, they had their own operating system. They spent all this money in developing the hardware and the software, but um, at the end of the day, they weren't able to sell phones. <laughs> I still have occasions where I miss the physical keyboard, but yes, you're making a very good point. So one kind of point of confusion that I think there's a distinct difference between Harmony on mobile devices and then Harmony that's uh, running, for instance, on other IoT products, or, and it may be, correct me if I'm wrong, but also on even things like wearable devices, there's an important distinction between the two. So could you flesh that out a bit? Well, again, so as I was saying before, there's a, there's a spectrum. It's a modular operating system uh, that can be uh, easily adapted for different types of devices. Um, if you have Harmony on a, on a, on a smartphone or on a, on a TV, it's part of the same operating system family. And so the advantage there is that integration uh, and communication between all of those devices is much, much easier because they're all using the same the same basic foundations. It just kind of makes development and, and maintenance of that entire ecosystem much, 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 much easier. Uh, but again, I just I, I wanted to make that distinction between kind of IoT and smartphone because everyone is is way too over indexed on the smartphone side of all this. Yes, of course, including us. Just again, you know, reflecting to some extent the questions that we've gotten on our own channel. You know, there is this kind of fundamental question that it seems like, as you mentioned, the developer community has strong opinions about, which is, you know, is this Harmony OS uh, more or less a dis you know a new kind of step change, a new OS? or is it merely uh, a fork of Android? How would you answer that question? So, I mean, Huawei has made their sort, so they've, I mean, as most global tech companies do, uh, they've made some of their uh, source code for the Harm for Harmony uh, uh, open source. One part that's open source and there's another part that's closed source. So it's very difficult to say. Um, again, Huawei has said the smartphone version does use uh, bits of of, Andro of open source Android code, uh, but mostly to kind of ease the transition between um, Android and, and Harmony. There's evidence suggesting that there's a lot of similarity. File naming conventions, kind of if you go to the file explorer, uh, the folders and things look very, very similar. The way that applications are, are packaged and compressed is very, very similar to, to Android. And there's there's a few other there's a few other bits and pieces there, but that's not definitive evidence that that it is you know quote unquote just a fork of Android. It could just be emulated or, or cribbed in a certain sense some of that uh, design, some of that uh, uh, kind of uh, internal structure to mirror Android. Long the the short answer is we we really don't know. Excellent, um, great. Thank you for that that clarity. I guess a follow-up question about Harmony is about market penetration and where it's going. So, you know, first of all, do you see Harmony OS gaining a foothold amidst other mobile manufacturers, even domestically? And then as a follow-up question, do you see the potential for Harmony to then scale outside of China? So smartphones, there's no evidence that, uh, that they're gonna see any uptake um, from um, other uh, external partners. The launch event last week, uh, they announced uh, a, a long list of, of partners, but they were all uh, you know, wearable makers, um, watch makers, uh, and, and, and appliance makers, TV makers, th this kind of thing. It doesn't look good on the smartphone side. Um, I think on the other side of things, so again, it's kind of smart devices, um, there's there's a lot of opportunity there uh, in China. Globally, I think it's it's a bit it's a bit difficult for uh, for me to make any educated guess on that side. But also, I mean, I think that one of the opportunities for Huawei, the big opportunity really, is the is on the IoT side. The promise of the Internet of Things, as I mentioned before, is kind of connecting every single device, right? So it's not just kind of you know these big uh, you know TVs and refrigerators and, and things like that, but literally you know your entire physical space is somehow connected to to the internet. Um, and so for a for a big company like Huawei, there's a lot of synergy there for their enterprise services, and there's a lot of, also a lot of opportunity in the in, with uh, the industrial internet as um, China moves more and more into advanced manufacturing. So as I guess a follow-up question, what does the future hold for Harmony OS? Where do you see the future of this going? It's hard to say. Um, I do think that it's important to remember that Huawei is not going to you know, disappear 
They're extremely uh, aggressive. They have a lot of cash that they still have. Uh, and so right now they're, they're just, they're, they're making bets. Making bets on a lot of different things and to see kind of what actually is going to work out. So, you know, a lot of the, the recent things that we've been seeing, you know, I, I think that, that we should take it seriously. Interesting. It does seem like there's broad misunderstanding in the international media uh, about the significance of Harmony. As you said, what would you describe most common misconceptions about Harmony? Yeah, I mean, so again, I think that um, number one, that it's just another Android fork and how much Android it actually has is a, is a, is a pretty big question. But to classify it as just another Android fork, I think is uh, misleading. I think everyone's missing kind of the IoT side of, of all of this, the open source side of it as well. I mean, again, I, I would say, you know, Huawei's, I mean, Huawei's not dead and, 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 and they're not dying. I think that, you know, in 10 years, I, I'm pretty sure they're going to hit their stride again and uh, will be quite formidable. Okay. Well, thank you so much, John. Always a pleasure to see you and your magnificent beard on the channel. Uh, thank you so much for your time and your generosity in sharing us with, with us today. And we hope to see you again soon, man. Thank you again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's always fun. So now we're back in the studio and I want to summarize three key observations from the conversation I had with John. The first observation I have is the catastrophic impact the United States sanctions have had on Huawei's business. I think previously for myself, I was vaguely aware that sanctions had had some impact on Huawei, but after talking to John, it's been a real disaster across the board for Huawei, specifically because of the sanctions that have been enacted by the United States. There are competitive pressures, there are other mobile phone operating manufacturers, there's other market conditions to consider, but it really is the US sanctions that have put Huawei in this position. The second key takeaway is about the nature of Harmony OS itself. As John said, people are over-indexed on the idea of it being a mobile operating system. In fact, that's not what it was designed for. Harmony OS was meant to present a broad solution for operating systems to be used across a wide variety of devices, specifically in the Internet of Things, which is gradually taking over the Internet space and the world in general. So to only narrowly focus on the mobile phone operating ecosystem is actually a little bit of a mistake on behalf of international medias. It's a much bigger and more complicated picture. A third takeaway for me is about this question about whether or not Harmony OS is merely just another iteration or type of Android. I had been prepared for John to tell me that it merely was another type of Android that had been slightly modified for use on these new Huawei devices. But according to his analysis of the code and the research they've done, that's not the case. And he said it was basically impossible to tell the provenance of this code and determine whether or not it was a fork of Android. So in summary, when it comes to Harmony OS, the picture is a lot more complicated than I originally thought. And I hope you guys got something from this video as well. If you'd like to learn more about John's reporting and the other work he's doing at the South China Morning Post, please check out the link I shared here. And as usual, thank you guys so much for watching Greater China Tech. Let us know what you think about these more informative, deeper investigative pieces. Sometimes we play around with pieces that are a little bit more fun, like the emoji video, but sometimes we wanna make deep tech pieces where we talk in detail about technological or internet related topics. So let us know what type of video you prefer in the comments and if there's other topics you'd like to see us cover in depth. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Jim Fields from Jim Buzai Guigu, Greater China Tech. We'll see you next week.